Welcome to this program in the TV studio at the ESO 2023. I'm Carlos Molina, stroke neurologist at Byron Hospital in Barcelona. My co-chair today is Mira Cata from Bern. Basel? Basel now, nah, right? You were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it. And our invited uh, speakers now to discuss the results of the large clinical trials presented, presented today in the first day of this ESO 2023 is my friend Jorgo Sigulis and Julie Bernhardt from Australia. Hi. Long way for you. Oh, yeah. Thank way. you for being here. Wow. It's a fantastic um, meeting, face-to-face, -face, successful, yeah. plenty of people, connection. Really, really enjoyed this first day. And an unbelievable lineup of yeah. trials we're mm -hmm. now going to discuss. Yeah, so yeah. Really Super excited trials, main results of uh, large clinical trials. Let's get it started with the first one. Is the is the RESIST trial. The RESIST trial is a large uh, pre ischemic, uh, ischemic preconditioning in the pre hospital setting performing in, in Denmark. So, the, could you come, would you like to comment the results of the trial? Yes, the yes, yes. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm George Tsivgoulis. I'm a vascular neurologist from Athens and a good friend of Carlos and Mira. Uh, this was a very interesting trial that was conducted in Denmark. It was conducted in the pre hospital settings. Uh, they used the same protocol with regard to ischemic preconditioning that was used in previous Chinese mm -hmm. trials because this was, a, as we know, a concept that was introduced by previous Chinese research. And overall, the results of the trial were neutral. There was no trend of efficacy, uh, in the, neither in the primary or secondary endpoints. Mm -hmm. There were mm -hmm. multiple subgroup analyses, but again, there, there was uh, no, uh, no effect, both in patients with ischemic stroke and uh, in patients with intracerebral hemorrhage. Uh, these uh, results are contradictory to the recently published RECAMIS trial in uh, JAMA, JAMA in 2022. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, we need to reflect more with regard to the translation of clinical trials coming from China into European, Australian or mm -hmm. North American clinical settings. Mm -hmm. Not automatically generalizable. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's a different setting, different standard of care, at the, the pre-hospital setting, different training. We yeah, were talking about that, the different training that they, they have in Denmark compared to the Chinese population. Different population. risk factors, right? Absolutely. Different populations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But it is something in Denmark, it is uh, an intervention that they're already training their therapists to do in mm -hmm. the hospitals oh. so that is something and that was five years ago when i was in denmark uh, so I, I also think there's that cautionary moment where we say do we have enough evidence to bring people bring these treatments into common practice already and, into clinical routine right. before having the evidence right obviously. right so this yeah. is i think a really important trial really important trial for denmark and really important for us to consider when is the right time to bring those interventions in yeah. to practice Innovative design, yeah, pre-hospital really setting design, really good, very yeah. good uh, analysis because they screen patients with stroke, they, they rooted out uh, the mm -hmm. mimics or TA patients, mm -hmm. they had very their well target designed. population, yeah. very good methodologically standpoint and design yeah. and uh, I think that uh, the results are compelling and uh, I, I, I see no signal of efficacy. Mm. At all. Yeah. Actually, do you, do you think it's the end of ischemic preconditioning? Uh, actually, I do stroke? not, but I think that uh, we need to have very well designed trials. And another issue is, you know, the sample size. And we're going to discuss this also. Mm -hmm. yeah. for our, how, 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 would you, how would you improve, for instance, the, the design of this trial to make it successful, not only based mm -hmm. on the sample size? Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, we should. Uh, I don't have access to the data, but maybe uh, they should perform some post hoc secondary analysis mm -hmm. and see perhaps some subgroups where is a, uh, a sign, a signal of efficacy. Mm -hmm. And they should base their sample size estimations on actually European data, not on Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think they're planning that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we need to perform this kind of trial in a regional level, yeah. where the system yeah. of care is, is more homogeneous. So let's move on to the next uh, topic, the next, uh, the, the, the the second talk this morning was a timeless trial. Uh, we wait for a long time for the, the result of this trial. It's, extended, it's a trial on the stand, uh, TKNK versus standard of care, which is placebo in the standard time window for patients between uh, four and a half and 24 hours using advanced imaging for, for patient selection. So we know the methodology. Uh, we know TNK is, is implemented. It's 
is switch over uh, in some countries is, mm -hmm. is the transition into T, to TNK is happening but it extended time when it's a different scenario so would you like to comment the, the main y results yes, of this trial? Yes, I think it was a, a, a long awaited trial, very well designed, conducted in uh, the US and Canada. Uh, they used solid brain CT perfusion selection criteria based on previous trials. Mm -hmm. For me, there were three major results out of this trial. First, that TNK compared to placebo is safe. safe exactly. That is uh, enlarged vessel occlusion treated with thrombectomy, like three quarters of the patients received thrombectomy. And even in the very late phase. Even in the very mm -hmm. late phase. Mm -hmm. Second uh, key message is that it increased significantly the reperfusion rates at 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we know that increased reperfusion mm -hmm. translates into, into clinical the efficacy. Mm -hmm. Then the trial was neutral with regard to the uh, primary and secondary endpoint. Uh, however, there was a clear numerical trend in favor of mm -hmm. bridging therapy. Uh, for me, the sample of 430 patients, 95% of which were treated in uh, thrombectomy ca capable centers, mm -hmm. uh, was not enough power in that sample to show the to efficacy. efficacy yes, points. because mm -hmm. the, the majority of the previous trials that uh, they, they compared the neck to place compared to alt place, they also used drip and sip scenario and they had also longer uh, uh, times between the neck to place infusion and the beginning of thrombectomy. Although in this subgroup, there was no difference. I saw the secondary analysis, but I okay. think this, this should be uh, something that we need to uh, address in future trials. So these were the three main messages for yeah, me. Yeah, actually I think regarding safety, so I will be cautious because 96% uh, of patients were randomized in a comprehensive stroke center. Mm -hmm. It yes. means it's mothership. Mm -hmm. So we don't have data of the safety in the, in the, in the driven ship. Yeah. When the time, in the, especially in the extended time window, the time delay from patient treatment initiation till the vascular to treatment to start is different. That's difference in the imaging modality when you select the patient in the pre-hospital and the, in the, in the community hospital compared to the comprehensive health center. So in this scenario, maybe the safety is relatively different. So we can look, uh, I, I want to look also to see the subgroup analysis in the in different time windows and the effect of infarct core in different time windows. Probably it's not the same, probably those patients who were uh, included in the trial in the very late time window, I mean, between 18 to 24 hours are different than those in the very early time window. Yeah. So we need to see the proportion of patients who will really uh, randomize in the early time window. It means four and a half and mm -hmm. six, eight hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to mention that this is the second trial after twist. Mm -hmm. Of course, no, twist different, different population, different, different. Uh, different patient, different patient selection. selection, of course, but again, uh, delayed time window, mm -hmm. Uh, ten ectoplase versus placebo again no signal of you know increased harm, harm yeah. with ten ectoplase. So underlying so, the safety, safety yeah, yeah. But, in, but, in some yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a larger proportion of yeah. patients yeah. exactly. So yeah. next would be I think it's, it's, it's promising not only for TNK but for other thrombolytics of course. that are coming in the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, give us this safety net that in this environment, especially in comprehensive growth centers, the treatment mm -hmm. seems to be safe. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is Precious. Precious is a European. Precious? Large. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a large, it's a large trial. So unfortunately, uh, the trial was yeah. not uh, ended at the, the sample yeah. size they estimated at the beginning. Mm. Uh, it was a European funded project, a large, huge collaboration, different countries at the European level. So they tried to respond the the, the, the question of if they combine different treatment, metoclopramide, uh, uh, paracetamol, the and the, uh, the other one was? Ceftriaxone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ceftriaxone, yeah. antibiotics. So you can improve outcomes with this combination. So it's a combination of different types of uh, combination of exactly. these different drugs. And, and they so did the factorial design. The factorial they design, two per two per two design. It was not uh, hype, you know, people yeah, really yeah. talk about it from a methodological point of view. Mm. What, what is your take on, yeah. on, on that? I think, it's a, I think it's a good approach if you're uncertain and you want to look at combinations of treatments. It's, you know, it's a good design. It, I, I yeah, think yeah, I think design is design. attractive. The design is attractive. I think it's the, one of the first trials that put in place this kind of platform. Mm -hmm. Two per two mm -hmm. per two uh, uh, design, 
but also and you see the balance of the treatment are very unbalanced. So 10% just received were well randomized to paracetamol, I think, or metoclopramide. So the, this, there is some unbalance, although the sample size was calculated at 3,000 and they yeah. have just one finding yeah. because of the lack of funding. Yeah, I think that obviously it's a, it was a very ambitious uh, project and an mm -hmm. interesting design. Mm. I think from a design point of view, it was really very interesting. But the issue was also, in my opinion, a bit about the control, um, which um, a lot of patients within the control arm actually got, got those mm -hmm. treatments and mm -hmm. that might have diluted some mm -hmm. of the effect, I guess, um, even though, as you all said, yeah, it wasn't the targeted sample size. But I want to congratulate the, the Absolutely. really the Absolutely. PIs on that trial. It was a, a huge effort. Academic, and academic, academic, totally academic. Absolutely. Trial, yeah. Absolutely. And also it's very attractive. The, the, the not only the design, but also it's surprising the, the results of the paracetamol group. So mm -hmm. they they went worse they went on worse. paracetamol yes, because indeed. you you cover the, the, the fever. You don't see the fever, mm -hmm. so you don't treat the fever, there are less infections, but you know, what's your opinion and on that? Pneumonia. Yeah. And, Pneumonia. Yeah, I think that uh, this is a very um, correct observation and uh, uh, it was contradictory to what mm. the investigators yeah. originally thought that mm. like treating proactively with paracetamol might be helpful. I think uh, the explanation of Carlos is uh, very clinically plausible and uh, again we see that the benefits of the stroke unit yeah. or those that oh, improve the outcomes so you have a very dedicated stroke unit very well organized, then doing a lot of prophylactic measures. Not worth not it. Not mm -hmm. worth it. Yeah. And it also costs money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. these are cheap yeah. medication, yeah. but true. again, it, it will cost you money. And in the end of the day, seeing all the clinical outcomes, uh, I saw that with the antibiotic treatment, you had less UTI, mm -hmm. urinary tract infection. Which yeah. makes sense. Which makes sense. But these are not the infections. Outcome related. That, yes, yeah, exactly. These are not exactly. Outcome related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, no effect on pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah. For me, this is the but most important But I think the, the problem important also with pneumonia is the de defi definition of pneumonia after stroke, which is not that simple. So the gold standard for the endpoint of pneumonia is a tricky one after stroke, yeah. because usually the definition, when you use the CDC criteria, you have fever, you have lung disease, and so on, which might all appear also just by the stroke itself, like having central fever, not being in indicative of having a bacterial infection. So that's also a tricky part yeah, of, of, of right. the study. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it was really interesting. But we go on and have much more nice lineups. Yep. And uh, there was the Elan trial. So our first positive trial here at the uh, ESOC. I think uh, I was really excited to hear the results. And uh, the Elan trial is also an investigator-initiated large European beyond European trial, so it was really all over the globe. Many centers participated and they looked at the effect of early versus late oral anticoagulation in patients with acute stroke and AFib. And they found that we can treat early. It's safe to mm -hmm. treat early. And um, they found other things, but what, what was your take? You were First of all, I <laughs> think this is a very innovative trial in terms of methodology. Mm -hmm. This was not a superiority trial, this was mm -hmm. not a non-inferiority mm -hmm. trial, because there was no randomized evidence to assess treatment efficacy between treating mm -hmm. early and treating late. So the investigators they had a sample of 2,000 patients, and uh, they actually uh, projected the rates of the different outcomes, and uh, they expected not to be able to find efficacy in terms of superiority, but give us some mm. clinically meaningful information with regard how we should be treating our patients. So this is one of a kind. I cannot recollect another trial with this innovative design. Mm. And I really want to read the paper in New England that has just appeared. No, no p-values. No p-values, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, treatment effects and 95% uh, confidence true. intervals. So uh, congratulations also to Urs Fischer, who masterminded the trial, and also to uh, his statistical group for this innovative statistical methodology. So for me, uh, there are two very clear messages. First of all, starting anticoagulation early using imaging-based criteria, and I'm not going to go into detail about the imaging-based criteria, but they're available in the publication and in the recent ESO guidelines. It is safe. It does not increase the hemorrhage, right? The hemorrhage rate was very low, only two symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage in the early and two symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage in the late group. So 
This is very clear. And then there was about 1% reduction in the composite outcome, including ischemic vascular events and bleeding events. So this is important because these are like thousands of thousands of patients, and now we have something, NOAX, that we can treat them early, which appears to be safe, and it appears also to be more effective in terms of the outcome events. One important caveat, the majority of the patients had minor mm. stroke, yeah. right? Uh, we need to keep that in mind. And uh, I think that uh, what is very important is to take into account in our treatment algorithm the imaging criteria. Yeah. Mm. So what do you say, what is your take also on uh, I think we need to move to the next trial. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> so time's sake, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We're, talking, we're going to be in, um, also on uh, the secondary prevention line, so we uh, want to talk about Arcadia, also yeah. a long-awaited trial, very innovative design uh, to guide based on biomarkers, patient selection within the ESIS population mm -hmm. uh, to kind of detect those with underlying atrial cardiopathy who might benefit from oral anticoagulation versus mm. antiplatelet. And Unfortunately, it was neutral, neutral. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I didn't anticipate that. I'm really into that theme as well myself. Nice. Um, but um, what, so, what's what's your take on the results? So it was neutral, but I mean, there were, as always, design questions about and 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 things. Um, I you think can more discuss. than the design. I, I like the design. The problem mm. is when you see the results. In the, 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 the main result that captured my attention was the low rate of echocardiographic uh, patients who were randomized using echocardiography looking for a large age or large man. I think it's critical. This is the, the, mm -hmm. the, the basis of uh, cardiomyop uh, atrial myocardiopathy. And, and this is one of the reasons of the failure. So the, the population were not selected on this criteria. So the, the mm -hmm. level of uh, atrial disease is relatively low, and think, yeah, it, it accounts with the with the. It might results. be the burden of underlying yeah. atrial disease was yeah. just too low, too low, and then maybe the effect then on the long run um, is 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 also also and an just focus issue. on cryptogenic. And, Why and not focus on the rest of a stroke? I, I think, think it's the next. That's the next thing, yeah. And I think also the other uh, question would also be, um, they talked about the crossover, um, which mm -hmm. might have also diluted some effect. And another issue yeah, is probably right. also the long term of enrollment after stroke. So we know that re-events rates are very uh, happening in the very early phase as well. And they had up to two months of um, enrollment for randomization. So, I mean, these are always hypotheses and we will see but, um, and, I, and the cutoff of the biomarkers. I, I of think the biomarkers. this is the last nail in the coffin of issues. Uh, we should yeah. forget issues. Issues yeah. is a theoretical yeah. const construct. Right. It's Absolutely. not clinically relevant. We You're have right. now four trials I based totally on the con construct. And again, I think it's true what Don Easton said. It's all about atherosclerosis. So issues mm -hmm. it might be very good for identifying people with underlying this atherosclerosis, not with underlying IF. IF. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, very exactly. solid data also from Atticus where people actually received implantable cardiac monitoring. Only one carter had underlying AF. So it doesn't matter what criteria you use, the moment you go to issues. No. So we have to change our minds as, as neurologists, not just focus on the stroke subtyping and, exactly. and thinking that the next stroke, the recurrent stroke, is going to be the same stroke subtype. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, 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 right. that's the problem. And, and also that, you know, the data, we know that in small vessel stroke and large vessel stroke, AF, underlying AF, is exactly the same rate yeah. as, with cryptogenic, as cryptogenic stroke. Cryptogenic. Okay, we know so, that now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, yes. another thing. So, so but let's move thing. on, I guess. <laughs> We're all getting so excited. Maybe so you need to change the... <laughs> Because to us the topic, yeah, I not, think not, so. Not the topic. The, oh, the you mean the right? Yes. Are we are we on the way? Yeah. So, yes. so just but one last word because I think it was so so important as well. Um, the lucky two because it is the first trial of having a cognitive endpoint, mm. mm. and I think uh, at long term, at one and, year, and that's really yeah. uh, to congratulate up yeah, and and it was very, really hopeful the phase two, the results we have now for lucky three. I think. Maybe you agree on that as well. So we have we have some encouraging data for the next trial. Yes. Hopefully within that population, no? You know, uh, with nitric oxide, uh, remembering going back to Enos, we had very positive phase two trial results. They didn't translate into yeah, phase three. Phase three. So uh, what I would say, it's 400 patients 
uh, very innovative design, very promising data, but as the Joanna small, Wardlow, the, the PI world. who should be congratulated, said uh, we need to move on to, to, to yeah. validate yeah. To, yeah. A, to a phase three trial. I, I think it's time to incorporate these uh, cognitive skills into to our yeah, all course. trials, all the stroke trials, not only in, in, Absolutely. in, in, in And it's the feasible, they yeah. showed it, it now, it is. It is. it is. it is. And I think we have to comment on the SANO and the, the stroke trials. They're, Areas that are complicated, secondary prevention is tough, you know, following them out to a year. And the one from India, you know, Ayurvedic treatment, uh, for them to put it to the test is really something that they should be commended for. And I think okay. perhaps there are some things that could have been changed in the trial design, but, you know, well done to those teams as well. And, and so exciting that now, first time, really a non and alternative medicine approach has been put yeah, to the sure. trial and Absolutely. really, you and know, tested I think using that the model methodology. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Really good. You, using, validate, using validated mm -hmm. skills. Absolutely. Good yeah. method. So yeah. thank you See for thank coming you. here. Thank you have you. to go to the next thank interview. You. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. Welcome back again here at the TV session together with Carlos uh, from Spain, Diana from Portugal, Alice from the Netherlands. So really happy to have you here. You. And you. we are going to talk about a bit the more younger uh, stroke physicians in our Congress in ESO and uh, what we can offer them. And I think one of the really highlights of the conference actually is also the young physician uh, researcher workshop you did today. You know? So maybe we might comment a bit on what happened and what, is, what were the highlights probably. Diana. Yeah, I mean, the workshop is uh, uh, one of the, ma the many activities that happen at ESOC that are very well suited for uh, early career physicians. So, of course, going to the session, seeing the large clinical trials, presenting their work, it's a great platform. Mm -hmm. And also there's a very friendly atmosphere and very good to, to connect with colleagues. So it's a perfect opportunity. But then there's some sessions that are more directed to, to the early career physicians, of course, the courses, lots of educational offers. But we also have this uh, workshop, Alice was there as well, uh, that directed to, to early career physicians that want to have some feedback on their own projects. So they present the project as an abstract to this uh, session. Usually it is an ongoing project or a project that is being planned and they receive feedback from mentors that are at the session, senior, uh, international mm -hmm. renowned mm -hmm. experts in the field that provide comments and of course this is extremely useful for yeah. the people that are receiving the feedback also it's a good platform for th to show the, tr the study to connect with people that can contribute with patients and collaborate uh, but also for all those that are uh, hearing the methodological suggestions mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we all know it's it's common for many studies the same problems and the same changes that can be made to improve so it is a very interesting workshop. Also, there are two, always two lectures by this 
mentors mm -hmm. uh, on you know career development topics we heard about mm -hmm. case control studies we heard about how to uh, create a research network mm -hmm. from Charlotte Cordonnier. So it, it is really a, an interesting workshop and it was well attended. It was really excited, exciting. Uh, there were four candidates selected mm -hmm. and they were really brave to put themselves out there mm -hmm. and present their work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two seniors, they were really putting them on the spot, but ha they had a good time and a good discussion and they did great. No, and I think it's also, as you said, it's for the ones who are brave enough to contribute and to share their da ideas and data they might benefit most, but also all the audience, I guess, you know, maybe the ones who are a bit shyer to do so, they learn about uh, doing doing their own project and getting all these feedbacks from the uh, from the mentors. Yeah, and that's it's, the it's opportunity. It's a great opportunity for collaboration, for sure, and, and to start your own project with uh, the proper mentorship. So I think it's important in Europe, at the European level, I think it's the first time we have the kind, this kind of initiative from the ESO, so congratulations for that. And also it's important for young physicians, young neurologists to start connecting and building up projects and collaboration. You don't have to be in the, your 40s to start doing this or be a senior neurologist to start building up uh, even a trial. Why not? Yeah, we have, yeah? We, we have trials presented. How many trials? I'm curious. Um, well, there were mostly uh, observational studies mm -hmm. and studying mechanism of stroke. Um, and But we also talked about uh, very different types of designs because, the, like you said, the RCT is like up there. But sometimes the research question is really yeah. um, uh, uh, needs another type of design. So uh, we discussed about the, the advantages of the case control yeah. and um, uh, being creative and, mm -hmm. and ask for feedback. Yeah. Um, and actually some of the research projects that were not selected for this session, they are uh, at the poster session mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. the, and there are all types of, of methodological designs yeah, presented at, at, at that session. So I also invite you everybody to, to go mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. poster mm -hmm. session Absolutely to the important. youngster physicians and researchers. And, and please seniors. Yes, go help, there as well. Go and help the young physicians. Yes, absolutely. They need you. No, it's, it's the important. future. It's yeah. important. And also for the moderated e-posters and so on. So really go there. I think the feedback is much, much valued. And also there are other programs within ESOC and ESO. Obviously there is the Stroke Masters, Winter School, Edinburgh, and, and so on. So maybe you might comment on that as well. Yeah, there's a wide range of opportunities that ESO offers indeed for, for early career physicians. And we have just to mention a few, maybe the most uh, known, the ESO courses, which offer uh, high quality educational content for, for young stroke physicians, and also the department to department program and the master program, of course. It's a, a very fine piece of, of this puzzle that altogether uh, you really have almost uh, the whole range of stroke care, you know, and theoretical Absolutely. sessions and practical sessions as well. So the summer school uh, this year will be already the 26th uh, edition. So wow. many, <laughs> many world uh, renowned. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting old. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I think most of the people we know have been at the, at the <laughs> summer school. Uh, you know, all the leaders in the field have, have good memories from, from the summer school. Mm -hmm. It is really already a very long-standing history, and everybody remembers having, uh, you know, colleagues that we still work Absolutely. with at the summer school. Yeah, go there, we do met, it. We <laughs> met there um, many, many colleagues that still continue mm -hmm. on the stroke field. Of course, some uh, change the field, but uh, it is really a great opportunity also for networking. But it's indeed a great educational offer. So it's a whole week of uh, theoretical sessions and uh, on all the range of of the, the stroke chain of care. And also uh, you have this opportunity also to connect with, uh, with uh, the experts that will exactly. be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the, the, the leaders in, in, in ESO will be there and will be able to, to discuss these topics uh, with, with the colleagues that are at the, the summer school. So then we have the winter uh, school. The winter school is a bit uh, different. It is always at the same uh, location, not as the summer school, which rotates all across Europe. The Winter School is always in Bern, which is a pioneer stroke center in the field of intervention, Imagine. and it is very much directed to, to intervention yes. in, in, in stroke, in acute stroke. And that's why people uh, should apply together a stroke physician a and, mm -hmm. and an interventionalist 
really to promote the connection in the team from the early career uh, people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in that hospital and also because there are sessions that are common and sessions that are directed only to stroke physicians or to interventionalists. It, is, it has also more practical sessions, more hands-on, um, yeah. mm -hmm. more clinical cases discussion. It's really an interesting uh, workshop as well. And I think it's also very good for the collaboration, you know, to understand both sides, so the neurologist better understands the interventionalist and vice versa and learn from each other yeah. from a very young age on together as Especially a team. Especially learn from each other. So yeah. a bunch of neurologists are right now training on interventionalists. So like in, well. in different countries. So it's the future. We'll take over. Yeah, common, so we are, we are, we are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We are, we are gonna work together as a team, together with neurosurgeons, for instance, in in a you know transversal teams that we can collaborate. But from the very beginning, we have to have in mind in our futures that we have these kind of teams that we need neurologists, interventional neuroradiologists, and neurosurgeons, and the cross collaboration with not only Bern, Barcelona, and other parts of the world that we neurologists are in charge also in the vascular treatment. Yeah, and really uh, there, there, there is this uh, teaching on how the teams should work together. Yeah. I mean, of course, there are there is always differences in the way teams work and the, yeah. the local conditions, but it really is a proof of the combined, yeah. the necessary combined expertise for the decisions. That's why it's so important to be in place there, to see yeah. how they yeah. work. Can you fit this yeah. methodology in your place when you are back to your exactly. hospital, how to apply this? Can you bring this? it back? Yeah, bring mm. it back. Yeah. And another thing is also the ease of block. Now you're yes. co-chairing with me, oh, yeah. so, which you're is very, really active, cool. Right? Yeah. yeah, so for those who are not familiar, it can be uh, accessed through the uh, ESO uh, website mm -hmm. and it uh, covers a variety of topics, mostly uh, information for uh, stroke clinicians, but also uh, developments in uh, stroke research and um, also reports from the department to department visits are mm -hmm. um, uh, shown there. And uh, one very uh, exciting thing was about a year ago, we invited uh, bloggers from um, external, uh, external bloggers from the uh, early career colleague group. And mm -hmm. there were many uh, very enthusiastic uh, uh, youngsters mm -hmm. who joined us and uh, wanted to collaborate and they cool. uh, are doing a great job mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. So youngsters and everyone who is interested join the ESO blog, contribute, uh, do some networking there as well and then there is also finally but not last there is also the reviewing program no, for the uh, European uh, Stroke Journal so um, I think that's also a great opportunity May, you might comment on it probably. Yeah, so uh, we got, what was it, 140, 140 applications oh, wow, yes, for right. this first, first edition of the Young Stroke uh, Reviewer Program in great collaboration with the European Stroke Journal with Ken Lees and El Sunset. So this has been really very successful. Yeah, and they're doing also a great job, I think. So no, and I normally think they are doing the job. <laughs> yeah, would you send a, a, a paper for review to a senior author or, mm. or a senior neurologist? He delegates in most cases in the young right. people. Yeah, so young the people, young, the young neurologists are the ones who review most doing papers. Doing the hard work, yeah. But they know they are not fully visualized mm. in the way they deserve. So I think it's a, it's a nice, super nice program. Yeah, yeah to give the, them the, a really yeah. a platform for all the hard work they're That's doing. True. And yeah. for some people that don't have the opportunity to have a mentor, you know, mm -hmm. at their center exactly. to, to learn exactly. how to do peer review, yeah. uh, it's a great way to start doing it. And then if they become uh, good reviewers, they will be independent reviewers for the journal and maybe even when they join the editorial board and join the journal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, the, all and the plan is really to produce independent reviewers in the European community of uh, and for the European structure. No, because well. we all rely on the peer reviewing system and having new, fresh blood coming in and, 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 and being enthusiastic about it is really very important. Yeah. And I think also, uh, at least in my opinion, you really learn also a lot mm. by reviewing. Um, you really, you know, for your own projects, for your reasoning, for your methodology mm. and everything, if you really have to systematically look at another paper, even if That's it's true. not exactly, not even in exactly your field even, I mean, stroke of course, but you learn so much. And I think, uh, so it's really worthwhile. So yeah, they should the, the high number of applications really shows that there is an area in need of, of support. So people feel they, they need support yeah, they to start. they are eager to learn and, they and also to be to, more yeah. involved. Like when you see a review from a junk neurologist, you can see they go 
point by point is, is excellent. They're very so, thorough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very. Great. So maybe a last take home message for our listeners to the young stroke physicians and out there, maybe some last uh, highlights you want I, to I think present. all stroke physicians and at early career and mid career, they are very much welcome to, to join ISO and really to take opportunity of all these offers. Uh, so welcome and if you need any information also on how to contribute to these activities and and really how to to join the groups and to participate in these courses and so on please let us know and we are always happy to to give more information excellent thank you very much diana Iles. thank you thank Mira, you carlos it was a, a pleasure it was a as, as usual, always. As usual. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> and thank you all of you keep connected in the iso studio bye-bye wonderful Good. Super.